Wiggy time on the fly. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Sean Wiggins, back at you here from the Mid-Hudson Civic Center in Poughkeepsie, New York. And there he is. Hey, today I'm filming this on a Tuesday. What better way to do it than on Terry Funk Tuesday? Here he is, the legend. He don't need no introductions. This is Terry Funk. Uh... Everybody has their argument. This guy's the greatest of all time. That guy's the greatest of all time. This guy's the greatest of all time. Usually settle on Ric Flair, but in the top five, this guy's in there too. And there's no there's no question about it. Terry Funk from the Double Cross Ranch in Amarillo, Texas. All around, you got Ric Flair. Um Brett the Hitman Hart I'll throw in there. Shawn Michaels I'll throw in there. Steve Austin I'll throw in there. But you talk about a guy, Terry Funk, I don't know who's legitimately saying something. That's the dumb son of a bitch himself, Vince Berry, who had the voice but was too big of a mark. Um, I don't know, he'll, he might still make it someday. And he is wrestling in this match, the other guy in the top five. Uh, and I'll explain both in a minute. And you can see my kind of shit-eating grin right there. I just can't believe I'm in the ring with these two guys. Even it's the independents. There he is. Jerry the King Lawler. And one thing I can say about both of these guys. Ooh. Camera work. I don't know. As I take a sip of my water. Uh, I'm going to fast forward this because the lighting is terrible. For those of you that don't know this building, the Mid-Hudson Civic Center in Poughkeepsie, New York. It is where all of the... Oh, oh yeah. I forgot. Funk meets him in the alley. Now, in this match, I should tell you, this is 2011. That kind of threw Lawler off. Uh, but that was uh, actually, I don't know if that was planned or not. He just blew right by me in the ring. And you'll always see me cut guys off if I don't think the other guy's ready. But in this case, not a chance was I cutting off Terry Funk. Terry Funk was 63 here, maybe even older. Still, not getting involved. Uh, this was October the 1st, 2011. Poughkeepsie, New York, Northeast Wrestling, N-E-W Wrestling.com. They put on some of the best shows in the world. I've told you that before. Uh, I said something there to Lawler, legitimately. And in this match, uh, Funk could not move around much at all. I actually picked him up at the airport and drove him to this show. That was kind of part of my deal at N-E-W. That I would do that for the promoter. I hope they don't talk here. If so, I'm going to fast forward. Well, maybe I'll turn it up. I'm checking his tights anyway, because that's what I'm supposed to do as an official. Uh, I don't like to be called ref, but that's what I'm supposed to do. But, you know, it's just for shit, shits and gigs. And Funk is talking. Let's see if we can pick him up. Again, the audio on these DVDs is not great. But for Terry Funk, I'm going to do it. You're looking at 75 years experience right there. Well, 70, 82 if you want to count me. At this time, no, I was 10 years in here. I was 12 years in here. I'm going to lower it because you can barely hear it. But uh, I'd actually refereed these two guys before in the ring together. They wrestled in Woodbridge, New Jersey at uh, for Jersey All-Pro Wrestling. Unfortunately, I have to fast forward because it sucks. You can't hear the audio. I know you guys can crap on me in the comments. Like, subscribe, comment. But let's see if we can pick up the end here. <laughs> Waller's looking at me for real here. Oh, there it is. That was how the match was started. Uh, on the way here, <laughs> Funk told me, 
Terry Funk told me, uh, oh man, I should, uh, I'm killing myself here, lowering the volume. <laughs> Terry Funk's one of the only guys um, who's in that, Ric Flair's in that group, Undertaker's in that group. Of all time, that it doesn't matter. He can be a heel, doesn't matter. Fans are cheering him. Uh, very few. Funk throws all into the outsider. As I was saying, when I picked him up earlier in this day from Newark Airport, first of all, the coolest two hour car ride ever, and then I got to drive him home. And we talked about college football and life and old school wrestling. It was great. There's Tim Walker. Tim Walker actually sent a lot of these photos in, and they did a story about it in PWI magazine where my name was printed. The only time my name was printed in a wrestling story, which was really fuck, really cool to say. that All those are live rounds, by the way, but they probably don't hurt so bad. But yeah, they, uh, Tim Walker, the photographer you saw there, sent everything in. You'll see later as to why I'm showing you this. Uh, one of the coolest things in the world, like if I could go back and tell your seven-year-old self that you're going to have a PWI wrestling story of you versus Terry Funk, and you'll see why. But Funk jokingly said on the way here in the car, Boy, you might have to work Lawler for me, and I'll be the referee. <clears throat> well, I didn't realize how true that would be, because Funk could barely walk. <laughs> Look at that. And he said, work with me, work with me. And I'm just letting, I'm letting him chase me all around the ring. Uh, no one liked Terry Funk. And a little known fact the legendary Homicide, the notorious 187 Homicide, who's been on the Indies forever, T-N-A-R-O-H, you know Homicide, his idol growing up, Terry Funk. And Terry Funk, uh, I could say this too on this car ride, we talked about guys he liked today. He said, I love CM Punk, which was great to hear. But then he goes, man, that boy, Homicide. I like Homicide. <clears throat> so I called Homicide couple days after this, maybe even the next day. I was like, dude, I, I have to tell you because I heard it firsthand. Uh, it's always cool when your hero growing up, the guy you watched, loved you. Funk getting all the offense here, and, and that had to be done because Lawler knew. Lawler could move at this time. Well, let's see, Lawler's 72 now, so this is 10 years. He was 62. And these guys are moving around great for 62. I won't move around this well at 62. But... Uh, going back to my top five, in, I mean, to make that, uh, I mean, these two guys never didn't make money, ever. They were always over. They were always, whether it was good guy, bad guy, whether it was WWF, WCW for Funk, ECW for Funk. I mean, Lawler just stayed in the WWF forever because he, he could. He had the ultimate job. He was Jesse the Body Ventura, but he could wrestle too. And he's, this is 2011, so he's doing Raw. And it was in his deal where he could still work independence. And this is the independent that he pretty much worked the most. Uh, N-E-W. Northeast Wrestling. Look at me giving all these guys a plug because they do put on good shows in indie wrestling. We'll thrive once again once we're out of the coronavirus. The coronavirus Pandemic which is starting to wind down because during filming here where this is, I'm filming this in February, he legitimately threw that chair at me. Uh, the first round of inoculations, vaccines are out. Funk using the chair, which for years has, is against the rules of professional wrestling, but I'll be one to step in the way. But the last time I read for these guys, I got to find it was 03. Uh, in Woodbridge for Jersey All Pro, and I don't think these guys talked at all before or during either one of these matches. This shows you how great a pros they were. But famous for the empty arena match in Memphis. I mean, these two guys are two of a kind. Lawler eats the table. All the offense here is Terry Funk. Uh, and one of the coolest things in the world. That shirt you see Terry Funk wearing right there, he gave that to me at the end of the night. Uh, and that's a sign of the ultimate respect 
Um, it's Markish, but you know, a guy giving you his old boots. Oh, I'm missing Lawler's offense. Ten minutes in, I don't know how long this match goes. But oh, Lawler, you <laughs> look at. I mean, you're seeing old Funk, but he's so damn good, it doesn't matter. And Funk had a great line and uh, phenomenal on the way up here. He said, "He goes, I hope my family lives to be." No, he, he said, I hope I live to be 105 and my family lives to be 106. <clears throat> and that's the kind of guy he is. He is just such a... <laughs> Who did that better than Funk? Candido would later steal that and uh, do it great too. But Funk known as wearing the chair around his neck. You talk to guys, even veterans back then, Funk was one of the stiffest guys in the, in the world that you couldn't get mad at because a second later he's making you laugh with a face or just his crazy selling. I dare the handheld cameraman to keep it straight. Ooh, Lawler launches that chair. The, the two of them are taking care of each other here, it, even though it's being a uh, hardcore match. But um, still, these two are amazing. I mean, when did Lawler not make money? So many guys say he's the greatest professional re wrestler of all time, and I'm one inclined to agree with it. Cornette says it. Raven says it. You know, he everything he did was great. He was on top in Memphis forever. And guys are, oh, he, well, he didn't leave Memphis. Yeah, well, look at his paycheck. He didn't have to. Um, and Memphis forever didn't have a professional sports team. So everybody's favorite professional sports team was Jerry the King Lawler. You know, everyone uh, goes nuts when Hogan rips the shirt off. You tell, you show me a pop bigger than Lawler pulling down the strap in Memphis. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Uh, and even though these two aren't doing a whole heck of a lot, it's still great because they're over like Rover and they're legends. But I'm nervous as schnizzle here, and you're going to see why shortly. Funk uh, with the ultimate sale. Funk could not bump. Uh, he hurt himself before this. He probably should not have wrestled this match. <laughs> now, if any other wrestler did that, I'd shit on it. But it's that's the ultimate Funk sell. And while they're throwing a drop kick at sixty-two, is one of the sixty-three. Is one of the greatest things you'll see. You could probably throw it now. But this is a wrestle fest. What's the name of this show? Autumn Ambush. It is a yearly show that NEW did. I don't know if they still do it. October the 1st, 2011. 2011 was a pretty good year. I enjoyed that year much. But um, I remember that. Oh, see, Funk went for a punch to the midsection and didn't quite connect. He got a little lower. I actually was as hungover as humanly possibly could be here. Um, the night before NEW had a show and a bunch of us were in the room drinking, telling stories, hanging out. And um, I woke up maybe at 6 a.m. <laughs> or I went to bed at 6 a.m., woke up at 9 a.m. I had to pick up Funk at like 10.30 and I got there like 20 minutes late, maybe even later. But Funk was on the ball. When he landed, he called. Yeah. Uh, what time are you going to be here? And I hated that I had to lie to him. I was like, well, it's going to be. Oh, here we go. I'm ripping the chair away from him. What are you doing? Oh, live round. Ooh. <laughs> I bumped. I shouldn't have bumped. Ooh. Actually, yes, I should have. I want. There we go. I want him to hold me. <laughs> This is the greatest thing in the world. Down I go. Funk having no care in the world for a referee. No care in the world for a law and order. This is, what is he doing here? There, now, uh, unbelievably, I ripped. <laughs> oh my God. Right there, I had to take the belt off for him. There's the ultimate picture. No, no, he's stripping me down. Almost to the birthday suit. I legitimately couldn't get out of it. I have nowhere to go. I wanted to tie my feet up in the ropes. <laughs> yeah, I hiked my drawers up so you could see my diaper. 
<laughs> All part of it. Uh, funk. Boy, you're really gonna have to sell it. But I didn't want to take too much time out, and that all that was done for this. Oh, oh. Funk trying to land that chair shot doesn't quite connect. The momentum of the rope snails it for him. <laughs> what you didn't see is at the time, uh, Kay Lee Ray came down there and threw me my towel. My little Boston Red Sox towel that I wiped around my drawers. Lawler now going to the top shelf. Ooh, fist drop right to the mush. And oh, a questionable count by the whole rep and show myself with my pant leg still taped to my foot. <laughs> Showing my Red Sox towel. And evil Rep Hansen, who is screwing over Funk in this match with a fast count, gets the victory for Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, did Lawler and Hansen have that? Did they have that plan before the match? Was that planned? I don't know. I can't comment on it. But holy ish, that was fun. I can, I'll be able to tell my kids someday that I refed Terry Funk Lawler. Get the hell out of there. Refereed Terry Funk versus Jerry the King Lawler in the Mid-Hudson Civic Center in Poughkeepsie, New York. A famous building. Home of the first... <laughs> There's the funker. Oh, God. Is Terry Funk great or what? And is Lawler great or what? Two, they're both on my all-time five. Um... See, it's hard to put five in there because you got to put Hogan in there. You got to put Andre in there. But all you guys out, all you kids out there, the Attitude Era kids that say Stone Cold and The Rock are right there. Yeah, they are, but you cannot discount these two. Lawler and Funk are as big and as over as ever, anybody. And I was very, very lucky enough to strike a friendship with Lawler and, and a small one with Funk. We don't talk today because, you, know, you know, guys don't talk. But. When we see each other, we talk, but we don't... Head <laughs> funk! It's a full moon out in Poughkeepsie on this night. But, uh, you know, guys don't keep in touch. But wrestlers, for the most part, don't keep in touch. You really only talk to a couple. But this is awesome. This match is on my trophy case. And I hope it lives on YouTube forever, because I'm so proud of it. Um, and to all you youngsters out there getting in it, you see a guy that you'll be able to work... Uh, there's Jerry the King Lawler victorious here in Poughkeepsie. Take take the opportunity to work as many guys as humanly possible. Work every with every legend, every veteran you can because you're oh you're gonna pick something up, you're gonna learn something. And at the end of this night, uh, Terry Funk gave me that shirt, and that's kind of a, a thank you as to me kind of putting him over by having my pants ripped off down to my ugly Hanes that I bought at Walmart just a few days before. But thank you for joining us here on Wiggy Time on the Fly again for Sean Wiggins. I'm Sean Wiggins saying Arriba Dirty and Chow. Keep in touch with yourselves and go to bed. Signing off. <laughs>